एबे अनुरोध रहबो श्री देवी दत्त कानून गो सी वो रेड क्लिफ ग्रुप ऑफ स्कूल टू बिगिन विथ आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक आरगस एजुकेशन फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग दिस सुपर्ब अपॉर्चुनिटी टू नॉट जस्ट एजुकेशनिस्ट बट पॉलिसी मेकर्स थिंकर्स फ्रॉम ऑल ओवर द कंट्री एंड कमिंग हियर टुगेदर एंड शेयरिंग नॉलेज बिकॉज आई स्ट्रांगली बिलीव दैट जब ज्ञान बांटते हैं तो ज्ञान बढ़ता है सो दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी हैज बिन हैज प्रोवाइडेड द एंटायर स्टेट अपॉर्चुनिटी टू रियली अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम पॉलिसी मेकर्स एंड हाउ थिंग्स आर मूविंग एंड दैट्स अ ग्रेट वर्क स्पेशली मिस्टर प्रकाश शाहू एंड मिस्टर जेना दे हैव बिन वर्किंग वेरी हार्ड टू गेट दिस प्लेटफॉर्म टूगेदर सी माई टॉपिक इज Future of Education and Skill Reinventing Learning for Industrial Revolution 4.0. When this topic was given to me, I knew only one industrial revolution, the one that happened in UK, which all of us read about. वो two or three क्या था वो तो मुझे पता ही नहीं था. So then, as with everybody else, got into Chat GPT and said, "Boy, industrial revolution two and three क्या है? Please tell me." And then, you know, as usual, Chat GPT gave a very coherent answer. and i'll tell you what it is for those who do not know so obviously the ir industrial revolution one was the steam engine generated industrial revolution that came about in united kingdom in so called you know london at that point of time and then obviously that that took away the physical limitations of human beings right things that could only be pulled by a muscle power of a horse or a human being now could be done with a machine and that removed the physical limitation the ir2 was the industrial revolution that was brought about by the process of mass production you know the 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 assembly line production that was the industrial revolution 2 what that did that took away the limitation of one thing being produced at one place so aap laga do line and as things move things get produced over a longer distance you can take things from you know you can import things from outside and you can then assemble things in a supply chain that took take took away the physical limitation of space the third one the third industrial revolution was that of automation and it systems so what that what did that do that took away the limitation of brain there are certain things which were uh, which were continuous contiguous in nature that you have to do again and again and again and human beings are not very good at doing anything continuously with the same kind of quality again and again so that entire automation of process made sure that those kind of repetitive activities are done away and taken by a machine or computer and that took away that that uh, you know limitation from human beings now what is industrial revolution revolution 4 that we are now talking about today as you all know we are in the world of artificial intelligence the progress that has happened in the last 100 years the industrial revolution took 100 years 100 years to get to where it was in the last 5 years ai has taken a leap frog and is really changing the lives as we see it today iot internet of things artificial intelligence and big data these are now driving the industrial revolution 4 and are going to fundamentally change the, the way that we look at things today there were many speakers who talked about how chat gpt is providing inputs jo cheeze hum you know things that content developers used to take months to make or weeks to make now are being done in a flash of a finger things that were taken by you know um, uh, illustrators to make over several hours can just be done by ai and uh, uh, artificial intelligence image makers in matter of minutes i was just talking to uh, mr prakash shahu and he was telling that he was experimenting with ai anchors who are going to read the news for you and just imagine that jo cheez itni capital intensive itni human intensive 
that now can really be done by a machine in hardly one hundredth of the time that would have taken a human being to do. And I'm pretty sure that everybody understands that this is going to change the world. It's already changing and shayad teen saal, char saal ya paanth saal mein the entire world will shift where we'll not be able to recognize some of the professions that are there. Uh, those who heard Mr. Pramatraj uh, Sinha talking, uh, he was talking about the fact that now we are entering into the creative economy where the jobs that we are going to be there are not the jobs that are there today. And therefore, when we want to teach, when we, in our classrooms, we cannot teach for a, for a world that we have not seen. When we know that we cannot teach for a world that we, have, we cannot see, how are we going to do, what is our going to be focus on education? And that is where I want to really touch upon. I think there is, it's a no-brainer now that skill-based education is an absolute critical importance. If you look at national education policy, Sarkar ne every, has talked about it in almost every page of national education policy. All our speakers have talked about this in multiple you know, uh, speeches. But when we actually go into the classrooms, and I'll tell you the context in which I'm coming from, uh, I head a group of schools called Radcliffe Group of Schools. We have about 15 schools. If you actually go into the classroom, you really see that dunya usse zyada nahi badli hai jahan pe hum maybe 20 years pehle the. In the classrooms of today, the teaching of teaching that is happening is very very similar to what is what was happening when I or any of you were there. While we all understand that we want to get into skill based education, but the reality has not changed so much in the education. Now, what I mean by that? All the people who are teachers, I still, I, I, my primary job is to interact with teachers and I ask them one simple question, I pick up a book in social study or English and ask them, if I don't do these last five chapters of social, do you think it's a big deal? And trust me, universally I get the answer, no, no, how can we do that? It is there in the course, if you don't do, how will it work? It is so important, we have to finish the curriculum and when you ask, why is that curriculum so important to you? Do you think that these five chapters are going to define the life of the child? Then they take a pause and think, no, yes, uh, no, no, change to nahi hoga. Then why are you so tied up? Why is, your, why is your heart so tied up with those five chapters? You know, leave five chapters. There was one teacher that I interacted with. She was teaching, she was teaching a uh, history chapter. There's a part there which is about uh, Akbar ke Navratna, right? And she was telling that this is such an important thing. So I said that, okay, Navratna, you tell me, agar koi bachcha wo Navratna mein se saat ratna yaad karke ek ratna bhul jata hai, is it the worst thing in the world? Is that what is going to really make, define the quality of education that you have provided in the school and the answer doesn't come out? So fundamentally, if we have to look at skill-based education, we have to see, look at the education from a grounds of point of view. Why are we giving education? Why are we doing something that we are teaching in the school? Why is that content so important to me? Today, you, whether you like it or not, in any school, the book is the center of the entire education process. That five or 10 or 12 chapters, that make or break, whether it be the parent, child or the teacher, everybody is hung up on those 15 or 17 chapters. And the understanding that we all have about education is, wo 12 chapters humne achche se karwa diye, bacche ko samaj mein aagya. That's done. Our work is done. We all talk about skills, but if you look at it, that's always given the last priority. Ye sab karne ke baad, agar mere paas time bachta hai, to main 10 minute aur skill kar dunga.